Hello and welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here today. I forgot. We did my top 10 video and I forgot to include a game because we didn't have a copy of it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. This is my this is my video. <laughs> what are you doing? This is top 10. I don't care about you right now. <laughs> Skull King from Grandpa Vex Games. Okay. Trick taking game. My most played game ever. Okay. That you don't own a copy of? Well, we just give it away so often. We usually have multiple copies. So we it's fair. have given that game to so many people. We've introduced that game to so many people. We travel with it. We will teach it and then we'll give it to when them. When Derek was gone, I okay. played it every night with my parents. So I have probably racked up close to 500 plays of that game, no doubt. Skull King. Skull King. Which we there's a new version it. of. Yeah, they updated the art and everything. We haven't gotten that, so we'll have to replace it with the new one. There we go. Sure. Perfect Whatever timing. The case, they can go watch your top 10 video yes. if they want to see the rest of yours. The rest of my this awesome is 10 games. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm here with the Funkhausers. Uh, we are filming a whole little series of videos. We did uh, your both of your favorite mm -hmm. two players. Yep. Uh, we're going to be doing five games you played while you were deployed. Yes. And now we're doing your top ten list. You My all babies. run Board Game Spotlight, which yes. is a YouTube channel, a Twitch stream, and Instagram. But I primarily know it and connect with it through mm -hmm. your incredible Facebook group. You probably have some of the most friendly <laughs> part of our industry contained within those like 22, 23,000 yeah. members. Yeah. So to all of you over there watching your leadership, I suppose, uh, film their top 10 list. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and for any of you that are here with Quackalope, if you're over on Facebook and you want to connect with a really good part of our community yeah. space, swing over to the Board Game Spotlight. Yeah, please hit do. Hit the like, follow button, join all the, the group, things, and uh, just be part of the conversation. Whatever the case. That's right. We're going to start this off, right? So I did not put these in any order. Okay. okay? I'm just Meaning, gonna pull... as you grab them, they're going to hierarchy themselves in an order. That is true. Yeah, that's though true. it's going to be an arbitrary, like, I'm not even going to look. So, like, what am I grabbing? I don't even know. What is this game going to be? Uh, oh, we're going to start with Orleans. Okay. <laughs> uh, not to say this is my number one, but not to say that it's not not my number one. This is clearly the worst out of all the ones that you're clearly, playing because it's clearly. the first one you play. We're going to go backwards. We're gonna Something like that. Something you're like as that. confusing as my bourbon scale is when it comes I to love rating it. games. It's a great game. Yeah, you played. It is. Yeah. You also spoiler a bit. Mm -hmm. This was one of the ones on the two yeah, player as well. There will be a little bit of overlap yep. between what we love as two players and what I have in my top ten. But there's also yeah. some games that I would have added in the top five that I left for the top ten. So now there's okay. a reason to go see both. I hear. Yeah, I you hear. see what I did there. Why did Orleans make it into both? What's so, going on with this game? And explain to people who don't know this sure. one what are you doing here. So this is a Euro bag building game. Okay. You are going to add uh, chips into your bag to later draw to then take actions. Yep. And you're going to be collecting uh, different resources and placing uh, houses in different places on a map in Europe. And But the central mechanic is, de is deck building or pool building or bag building, right? Like, And it's adding to a bag yep. to draw later. And you're able to uh, strategically, not in a push your luck sense of way, but strategically place them on the board and yep. set up stronger turns later. You can really start to program what you're wanting to do. I put this on the two player. Well, Lizzie and I both put this in the two player, and I'm putting it in my top 10 because it plays at two to four just perfectly. Mm -hmm. I, it really just, at any player count, it is perfect. At four, it's much tighter. It plays a lot different than two or three. Yep. Um, we have all the expansions, so you can play co op if you really want to. I was going to say, the lip of your box kind of <laughs> indicates a bit more than just base game. Just a little bit. Uh, the co op is a really cool expansion mm -hmm. you can add in. We've got the geek bits, we've got the, the bags from Board Game Geek, all that beautiful stuff in here. What is it that keeps getting this back to the table? Like, when and where do you play this one? Uh, this is going to be a, this is a recurring game night for uh, really more of like a Euro heavier type of crowd. Yeah. Not really entry level. Not to say that a new gamer couldn't play this it's because. A bit of Though. It's a little bit yeah. above. It, it's, it's a longer teach, right? right. There's, a, there's a lot more going on that if you don't have that basis, then you're gonna you might struggle just a little bit. But this is just every time we play it, we are just left satisfied. Yeah. And to me, that is that's the crux of just an amazing game. If if I play it and I'm satisfied at the end of the game and I just am always enjoying it, then that's a game that's perfect. It's for me. It's got the right balance of frustration when it comes to drawing from the bag combined sure. with where do you place your actions down on the board. Mm -hmm. There's this. Two player, like we already talked about, there's a nice head to head, it's a yeah. little bit more open. You get up to four, and your spaces are really limited. And so, yeah. planning and programming and knowing when you're going to start sacrificing for end game points, mm -hmm. it's got so much going for it. It does. And then, also added onto that of the decision taking from your bag or your pool yep. to put up onto the board. Yep. And that's why I love the trade and intrigue board because it adds just a little bit more. I haven't ever played with it. Really interesting. I yeah. think if you like this game already, the trade and intrigue Pull just makes in. it better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, it's a good pick. That's Orleans. It's a good pick. It's just, certainly not the, the, the least best. No, no, not at all. 
Uh, Philip Millman's going to be proud of you. Yes, I have still not defeated him in this game. Well, why? I mean, how could you? Who, who can? Yeah, it's true. He is true. the greatest. It's He's true. He's the champion. Baseball highlights 2045. Yeah. Deck building? It is deck building. Okay. It's deck building. Uh, set in a futuristic uh, baseball league with robots and, and uh, uh, human genetics. And it's, to me, it is a great use of theme and deck building. Yeah, it does. It's I, probably the only game that I'm aware of that, I'm not a sports person. Right. Probably the only game that I'm aware of that I don't have to apologize for the fact that it's a sports-inspired game. Correct. Yeah, it, it stands It stands on its own mechanically, mm -hmm. but it's elevated again by the theme. And I'm a huge baseball fan. been playing since I was a little kid. And this game does everything that I want it to. The way that you can build your lineup of cards mm -hmm. and you can do slow, average, fast, but then you're looking at different ways to combat what you're building, right? Because you're playing different yep. innings. So I can see, okay, you're building a heavy robot, so I'm going to go to to cards that allow me to cancel against robots or humans. Yep. It's just a great back and forth. Now, it does play one to four, and the solo on this is actually pretty solid as well. Okay. Um, but to me, two players... Head to head. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what this. That, is. That's what okay. this game is. Um, and again, I'm always satisfied playing it. Yeah. You know. Now it has a lot of expansions, extra cards, but I believe base game alone gives you enough to play and work with. Right? Yeah. Like the base game alone teams. gives you, I think, eight or more different teams, yeah. uh, plus you know various um, cards to add yeah. to your deck. Uh, so. Just getting the base game is going to leave you with enough content, and then if you really love it, you can you start can expand. Yeah, yeah. This I is... would say go get the spring training expansion if okay. you love the game. You know, you buy the base game and you love it. Get the spring training expansion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and this is going to be anyone that anyone that likes baseball. Mm -hmm. A little bit across there, they probably already aware of it. But then also, primarily fun primary function is deck, deck building. building, and yeah. so anyone that enjoys a deck building yes. system, it yes. has a lot to offer. And I would I would argue some people don't pick this up. Because of baseball on the front, it's why I would have avoided it. Of course, uh, and they yeah. should. They should. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. Cool, good pick. All right, Ooh. talk to me. War chest, fancy poker bits. That's true. <laughs> That's true. The um, mouthfeel on them is amazing. It is. Uh, again, two to four players, yeah. but I still think best played it too. So, for those of you who don't know, my wife and I primarily play two-player games, sure. and so our lens of gameplay our our lens of do we enjoy a game is is solely based on two players yep so uh this is to me another two player game that is just fantastic because it's another deck uh deck pool builder bag builder right yeah uh but it i never on, think of it like that though i always right? think of it like as an advanced chess checker it is. style system it's 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 the bag builder plus a board. You're, you're drawing and placing down onto a board, and then yep. it's a tactics game it where is. everyone, your archers, your swordsmen, your bowmen, so they're all positioned in this way that you're... It's it's this it's this constant battle lines. Yes, and that's exactly. And yeah. and it's again the cat and mouse were kind of the sneak. Can you be sneaky? Uh -huh. Like, can I set up a play where I can use my lancers to charge through your archers, or can your crossbowmen end up defeating my? Um, Cal, not cavalry, but like my infantry, and and the way that you stack the health fat is is yeah. just it's really well done in the fact that it's not too rules complex, uh -huh. but it's just enough to give you a, a good strategy. You got everything in that box. I don't have the newest expansion actually. The Siege, I think it was Siege, right? Yeah. The, the, I don't have that yet, but I will be adding it. I do have the previous expansion in yep. here. Yeah. Yep. And I I do believe that the Siege expansion will fit. I think there's enough room in here. But we'll see. Do you, you have it? it? I don't have it yet. No. No. I. For those of you who know me, uh, and for those of you who don't, I'm a big proponent of take every expansion box and then dump it inside the base box and make people cry. Uh -huh. And make just if make you, people... Look, if you're keeping the game, I'm not going to judge you too harshly. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I've done that with uh, Marvel United. I've done that with... Oh, we're doing uh, a video on that. Blood Rage. All of my Blood Rage is just... Beep. Right in there. Just. I might be a little upset about that one. You might cry. War chess. Oh. Dice thrown. Season okay. two re-rolled. Ah. Uh, it's fan fantastic. Phenomenal. Fin phantasmic. It's head-to-head -head powerful Yahtzee. It is. It's power Yahtzee. Yeah. 
and uh, added on to that the different asymmetric heroes okay. and the way that their decks uh, upgrade their their abilities, right? Because you're you're rolling, you're trying to get runs, you know, small straight, a flush, a full house, things like that. Um, but gaining those cards to manipulate the dice mm -hmm. and also manipulate your player board while trying to defeat your opponent, mm -hmm. it's just a great puzzle. It, this is... 20 30 maybe 40 minutes if you're playing four or more players yep uh but if you're playing a two-player game i'm i'm talking 30 minutes max and you're just rolling dice hitting each other in the face uh nicely nicely or non nicely i don't know maybe it depends you on your know. friend group <laughs> it's true we playing with jan <laughs> but this to me again going back to the satisfaction yeah uh but on on top of that if i lose i'm like oh all right you know what let's go again yeah i want to swap out heroes Right, okay. I want to try somebody new. Like, you know, we I've played where we'll take multiple heroes, we'll do a draft, and I'll have like a stack of three. You might have a stack of three, and we'll just do knockout. Like, we'll play. Okay, cool. Yours is yours like is knocked out. You're like summoning exactly. Else into the Your arena. next one comes in. It's like tag team, right? Mm -hmm. And then the last one standing wins. And there's just some really cool. You've got King of the Hill. You've got team variants. There's a lot of flexibility in how they've built these rules and the community around this game. Yeah, is really solid. Awesome. Cool. Really awesome. Very cool. Oh. oh man, let's go with. What do we got? Let's go with this one. Lord now, of the Rings, uh, the confrontation. I struggled picking this one. I have no idea what this is. I struggled picking this one because it's out of print, uh, and you can't actually find it, which is like unfortunate. Even secondary market? Yeah. No, you can find a secondary. Can you a bit? You can. You can find a secondary. Probably price. A little expensive. Yeah. Little expensive. Okay. But it's not actively in print. You've got a few games on your shelves that made me. Uh, I have a few. Uh huh. <laughs> I, I yeah. I have part of being in the hobby for a while. It is. Yeah. It is. So you can't actively find this game, which is unfortunate because it is a fantastic two-player Stratego-esque game. Hmm. Uh, I believe Reiner Knizia. Yeah, this is a Reiner game. Um, you play on a diagonal board, and you've got Stratego pieces, and they're all the either the Fellowship or the or the Mordor. You know, the the minions of Mordor, and you're trying to get uh, Frodo to mm -hmm. Mount Doom, right? Mm -hmm. But while you're doing that, you move a character into a location and you will have to reveal who's there and then power, you know, yeah. whoever. But we've got hands of cards and those cards have special abilities and attack. So then you play a card and my one might beat your eight because I add nine strength to it. But I will never play that card again. So the decisions sounds that you're cool. faced in it here, sounds cool. you're like, okay, do I lose Legolas right now? Does or do I save him? Because if you sacrifice him now, he may open the door. He could for use his ability maybe. later, right? Like they all have abilities, and once they're off the board, what's um, endgame? Is endgame the endgame is Frodo or being you catching? Yeah, either That's... either catching Frodo or he gets the ring to to Mordor, and it is such a solid two player game. Um, and again, I struggled because I yeah. want more people to play this. I want more people to know how great it is, but it's difficult to find. Uh, but if you like Stratego... Harder to find now. It is. Well, no, I mean, oh, it, after may, this video, it may be. Harder to find it may now. Be. Uh, and this is a deluxe edition, so there are two versions so of this floating around. if you own a copy of this that you're not currently playing, hop onto the secondary market and <laughs> sell it. Because there's going to be at least... There's probably going to be like 30, 40 people now looking for it. I, I would highly recommend it. Again, a two-player game. Um, very tense decisions. Uh, so you can even go through the Mines of Moria if you want to try to like press and not go further mm -hmm. and try to get him there. But again, if they've played the Balrog there, the Balrog gets plus X strength if he's there and catches you. So again, and you can put your your, your characters wherever you want, but there's this, this cat and mouse of like trying to catch... You remember playing Stratego as a kid? Yep. Where you'd set your bombs out and you just yep. feel super clever when you got somebody or you caught their bomb. That's this. Well, but there's been... Lord of the I've Rain. played some cool innovations on that type of system yeah. that... Over, I mean, uh, two of them were on Kickstarter last year, and they did really well for what they were doing. They were each right. innovating on certain mechanic system. One of them a little bit more advanced with hidden pieces moving around a circular board. Okay. And another one was cubes based off of numbers, and you're trying to stack them at the end of the totem. Okay. Uh, this sounds like a lot of fun card play with yes. that blind movement. It is. so enjoyable. It is, 100%. And again, that decision of when you play a card, yeah. you're... You, You'll never get it back unless there's an ability that lets you get it back, uh -huh. right? So there, it, it, and it is just like so. Then it's open information. So you're like, oof, they just spent that. So now I might be able to sneak through. But then if they might be leading you into a trap, I know where to press my advantage. Mm -hmm. But they also know that you know that you know that. 
So it's like the the, the like double it. switcheroo. I like it. I want to play. I want to <laughs> play badly. We will play. All right. Endeavor Age of Sail from Burnt Island Games and Grand Gamers Guild. Yep. Uh, this is a reprint, uh, re-implementation of the original. Yep. Um, that came to Kickstarter, I think it was like a year or two ago. And uh, Deluxified, right? It was on beautiful. Kickstarter. Beautiful, beautiful game. And I had never played it until mm -hmm. I got a chance to play the Kickstarter. Uh, and I fell in love. Yeah. I fell in love. We played this five times, and I was teaching anybody that would sit down. I, I'm talking, we played the Kickstarter prototype five times. Like, I just could not stop playing it. And Lizzie was like, oh, this is awesome. And I'm like, I know, let's keep going. But part of it is the fact that you're so limited in turns that you're trying to maximize yep. as much as you can because you're only going to play eight. There's only like one, you know, eight rounds or eight turns, and you're trying to build up your. The amount of stuff buildings. you can do in eight rounds. Is it's remarkable, incredible. But you also feel like you only have right. eight rounds. It's that time, right? You're like, okay, do I have enough time to do this or what I want to do? And, and the area control on the board yep. and trying to complete different uh, resources and, and moving up the tracks, it's just Euro goodness, really. It is. It's, it's tracks and resources. Um, I, and I really appreciate, you know, this does have uh, slavery in it, mm -hmm. okay? So... I appreciate how they have handled that in addressing it and how it's used in the game. Mm -hmm. If you choose to use slavery it, and you, it's abolished, uh, if the players at the table abolish it... There's a timer on it, right? There's a timer, mm -hmm. and you'll score negative victory points, and it's quite a bit of negative victory points that a player that used slavery will... But you're still playing minus. within the realm of historical events, Correct. and they Correct. didn't apologize or avoid that. They did not. But did their best to... They did their best to address it and not just use it frivolously sure. and, and to use it in a thematic way, and so... But I just, I really appreciate what this game does. Cool. And, and especially with the Kickstarter version, I think it's enhanced by uh, the game trays and all the special bits. And, yeah, of course. You know, you know how that goes. Oh, okay. Um, Your games are slightly bigger. They're a little than, bigger uh, than, than the ones that, that she brought over. That's right. Maybe we can like completely <laughs> <laughs> obscure me. Maybe. We'll see. Mythic. Super, Super fantasy, fantasy Brawl. Super Fantasy Brawl. So this is a little light, actually. Because it's currently... <laughs> Sitting on the table. Yeah, you're currently head-to-head -head <laughs> with Shira. Uh, how's that going? How's, who's... Three to two in my favor. So okay. I have three, I have three right. trophies. She has two. Yeah. But she can still come back. She's set up to take another one next turn, so I have to figure out how to stop her. So okay. it, it's a close one, right? Head-to-head -head skirmish game. Yes, it is. A head-to-head -head skirmish, two players, uh, two or four, based on a team variant. Um, beautiful miniatures. Yep. Uh, I love the way that you use the uh, board with positioning on the different statues yep. and then the way that the objectives come out and you can see what each player is trying to accomplish and then you're using your action cards on three different uh, colors really, mm -hmm. red, uh, yellow, blue, and you're using those as resources to play your cards out but you can also play off turn. You've got tight actions. Yes. You've got fun characters and abilities. Yep. You've got the ability to combine your teams in any mix match that you want. Yes. And instead of just a head to head skirmish where you're just beating up on each other, it encourages you to move and play and shift and 100%. transform the board. It takes yes. your attention off of uh, Unmatched, like a game right. that you enjoy quite a bit. Yeah. One of my biggest criticisms is sometimes you'll get into a punching match. You will. Where you're going back and forth and back and right. forth. Super Fantasy Brawl takes that and says, yeah. you can't stay where you are. No, not at all. And yeah. it actually encourages You'll lose. players You'll to lose figure out. You, you will. It actually encourages players to figure out a way to score off of the objectives and not necessarily knock out other players. Yep. You will score points for gaining By the, the way, oh, I, can, I can see running in and out, back just, and forth. Yeah, if you hear the little ding, that's we because we have a lights. child. Are you swinging through here? Are we catching him before he gets in? <laughs> he can, <run laughs> he can in come, come say hi. You can just say hi. Hey, you're not you're on camera, film. though. Do you want to come here? You want to come say hi? Right here. The camera's pointing that way. What do you think? We're going through your dad's favorite games. Hi. Which game is it called? Right now, we're covering Super Fantasy Brawl. I know. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so, if you hear the, the ringing, that is, that's our uh, child that's going in and out of the door. Uh, out of the system. And now I he's, know. he's being transferred he, to another room. He loves games, so he doesn't... There he is. He loves games. He's already playing Rhino. He's my heart. He's playing Rhino Hero, animal, animal upon animal. Um, so he's a little gamer. Uno. He plays Uno and I, actually wins Uno. I'm excited to see as he grows up when each of these starts hitting the table with him. Yeah, I mean, I think because you're going to have a you're going to have a gaming partner on your. Hands. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. That's yeah. the third player, right? Yeah. Uh, so Super Fantasy Brawl. I appreciate that it doesn't just encourage players to knock each other out, but also figures out 
uh, creative ways to accomplish objectives. Yep. Uh, and a beautiful presentation. And I'm, I'm just, I mean, well, yeah, okay. you know, little, Hi. little big. Hi. What else do we have? All right. <clears throat> this one almost like completely covers me up. Lisboa by Vitella Serta. Oh man, what a beautiful mind. Yeah. Have you played any Lacerda games? Yes, I've played I've played a, a collection of them, okay. and uh, I don't know how he does it. I've been trying to figure that out. Because, and he'll tell you, uh, if you spend any time with Vitaly, or you see on, on his Discord or in his uh, Facebook groups and things, it's easy. You just play a card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just play a card. That's mm -hmm. Lisboa. Play a card. Okay. And then watch as the, the re cascading effects of your decision makes you have... A just a slew of options. This is one of his I haven't had a chance to play though. So what are you doing in this bow? What so, is why is it here as opposed to some of his other titles? That's fair. Uh, now I I love most uh, I, all, honestly all of his games. Okay. okay, it's actually really hard for me to choose his, my favorite of his. I've not played um, like a full finished copy of On Mars yet, but we've got a stream coming oh, to that so pretty good. soon. It's really so excited. Good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this one for me is the fact that it's play a card. And then watch as that card evolves into all these different actions. And then on the board itself, you are excavating the ruins of, you know, like you're pulling the rubble back mm -hmm. from uh, Lisbon and in Portugal. And it's just beautiful. Ian O'Toole? Mm -hmm. My goodness. How does he do it? How does that... I, I just... <sighs> this one just leaves me awestruck every time I play it. And it also makes my brain hurt. So, like, that combination is just incredible for me. Um, I've not played it in a while because it's so heavy. It's, sure. It really needs the right group to I have play. a little bit of trouble tabling some of his games, yeah. primarily because I want everyone to come already knowing how to play them. Right, right. Cause if, but if you have friends that show up oh, that man. go, oh, I love Lisboa. Yeah. You're like... Yeah, or Escape Plan, or Gallerist, yeah. Combat, whatever it is. If yeah. they know, this rewards repeated plays. It does. Most, if not all, of his games reward. reward I'd say all place. of his games have a degree of depth that mean by by play ten, you're typically still getting something new from the experience. Right, which right. is which is a remarkable thing. Right, and figuring out new strategies and yep. ways that, that you can combo. And how to start combo, breaking combo. things, yeah. not breaking the game, but, right. but breaking your what seems like a straightforward forward strategy. Yep. You start realizing that if you if you twist it here or like spend right. a little bit more resources in this area early game or take some debt early on, never know. the game changes. It does. Yeah. And it's it's all the lever pulls and all the yep. the intricate systems. And again, it goes back to I don't know how he does it, but I'm in awe of what he does and uh, I love him. So this Boa nice. was the one that I chose of, of his games. Nice. I'll stick that. I'll do that we'll right there. That. Yeah, we'll all slot right. that in somewhere here. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We've, we got, we've got room for a couple more. Vindication. <clears throat> Vindication. Being wretched fool. Vindication! <laughs> Brooklyn Nine-Nine fans out there. Um, so, Vindication is a game about um, struggle and uh -huh. exploration. Uh -huh. um, pretty thematic for a Euro game. Getting more thematic now. Did you pay attention to the last Kickstarter? I did. I got the new expansion. Did you? Okay. I did. I've not played them, though. Biggest criticism of this game, for me, mm -hmm. was the lack of narrative integration into what presents itself as a overwhelmingly thematic game. Fair. It's resource management. Fair. It's, it's it got is. This, it's got this interesting track of combining resources to make more resources, right? right? And that's right. great. They're now introducing stories, events, yep. seasons. Which is what players wanted more of. And yeah. I know that, that yeah, you I had did. that criticism. I did. Others did. A lot did. of people did too. Um, because when you boil it down, it's really a Euro. It is. It's a Euro game that has a shell of, of um, heavy theme. And Orange Nebula has been kicking by. They're amazing. And I'm so... Little little blurb here. Yep. I'm super excited for their next one um, that's about to fulfill is the, uh, oh, the Planets one. I can't even think right now. I just lost it in my, my tongue. I don't remember names at all, so I have nothing to yeah. apologize for. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it's their space exploration one yep. that I should totally remember anything, the name. Anything Orange, Orange Nebula does. Oh, I'm in for it. Yeah. I'm in. Um, so you can, I mean, you, you, can, you can see. It's it's packed full of goodness. Oh, wait. I Again, I'm blanking on the name still. I believe Quackalo yeah. has a copy of that right now. Unsettled. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I figured it out. I believe... I'm not sure when it's going up, sure. but I think we're covering it first exclusively. Ooh. I think Jan has that in Maryland. Does Jan have that? Yeah. That's awesome. So I'm here That's exciting. instead of with that game in Maryland. But I'm not sure which he's decision He's not here and you are. That's true. That's, yeah. well. You know? 
Uh, but anyways, so re again, boiled down, it's a Euro, but again, with the expansions, it's going to take it to a, n a narrative level, which I think a lot of people were hoping for. Um, but overall, the, the way that you explore and you upgrade your character and you're getting the different, um, I don't remember what they call them, but you're the different you're getting skills and you're getting and strength and courage. And, yeah. yeah, and it's really cool. I'll tell you what they do really well. Whoops, it's upside down. That is a, that's a party foul. Um, what Orange Nebula does, and you'll see an Unsettled, because I played a prototype of it. Okay. They take um, psychological, psychology studies, and they turn them into board games. Like, think about this. This is the study of courage and bravery, and, yeah. and they take those, and they build how, them into a game. How a man can redeem himself. Right. The, 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 the path to redemption yeah. through vindication. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Unsettled does the same thing where it takes a, a psychological look at team cohesion and the inherent biases that we all have and how someone could be uh, quiet or you've got the, the type A's and the type B's mm -hmm. and you've got people who are overpowering and people who are manipulative mm -hmm. and how those teams can work together towards a goal. Um, and you'll see in Unsettled because they, they, have, they, they were talking about it how that comes up, how that comes up. Because there'll be Very points cool. where something will happen to you that may be uh, negative for the team, but it's an inherent trait to you that you don't want others to see. And Sounds now so that cool. you have to work through that. Sounds so cool. Yeah. So, like, um, yeah, it's, it's super neat. Okay, there we go. We're getting there. Look at that. I mean, this is a pile. Is this number one? Yeah, it's number one. It has to be. It's number it one. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is number one. I yeah. mean... So these were all these were all two through nine or two through ten in our two player game. Yeah, you already went into why this is one of your favorite two player games of all time. They can watch that in the two player top ten video that we did with your wife. Tell me why this is number one. Though. Like justify that. Where is it? Nostalgia? Is it the theme? You said this is the most thematic game you've ever played. It is. And I added the caveat, or you added the caveat with me that if you know Star Wars, yep. that's where it's going to be coming through. Yep. But why is this earned the right? To sit at the top. So it earned the right to sit at the top for me um, for multiple reasons. Okay. Number one, I am a huge Star Wars fan. So I sure. am huge in in everything Star Wars. I am of the of the opinion that more Star Wars is better. And I, this is going to be interesting. We're going to get lots of comments. Yeah. And, I, and we're, there's going to be a very healthy discussion, I hope, in your comments about this. But more Star Wars is always better. Period. End of discussion. Okay. Sign off. Yeah. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Okay? Yeah. I've loved every single one they've put out. 7, 8, 9, loved them. Okay. 1, 2, 3, love them. Yeah. I do. Just more I Star do. Wars. Just like more Star Wars. Snuggies, more of plushies, the universe. Give us more. On cardboard now, granted, are there, are there negatives to those movies? Of course. Of course. You can constructively I mean, critique the them. The is always a little rough. You can constructively critique those, but more Star Wars, man. Just yeah. more. Ah, oh, I can't wait for, for some of the new stuff that's coming out. Like Rogue's... Uh, um, Rogue Squadron, Rogue, yeah, like Rogue Squadron stuff, like uh, Bad Batch. You've uh -huh. got the the uh, Rebels. You've uh -huh. got Clone Wars. Like, there's so much more, and Disney Plus is killing it right now. So I'm super excited. Anyways, number one because of uh, because of fandom. Number two, yep. because it's mechanically solid. It is a two player struggle, cat and mouse. Hit not necessarily hidden movement, but a hidden it's base. Got a touch a hidden touch. A little touch. It feels like that. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. There's a hidden rebel base, and yep. the Empire's trying to expand, control, and find it. Um, but the way you do that through your programming and your leaders going on objectives and trying to, again, the, the, the production track mm -hmm. and being able to put things out and trying to figure out, okay, I really need to plus up my mm -hmm. hidden base. They don't know where it is, but I really need to get some troops down there uh, because I need to be able to to defend an onslaught because you know it's coming. Yep. Like you're sitting across the table and you're sweating. You're like, I see this ginormous, like three AT-ATs, uh, Star Destroyers. That that Death Star is getting really close. So yep. do, I need to, do I need to jump the hidden rebel base? So the struggle between the head to head and the and you've got this you know it's just so tight and the way that it all works together and then you add on to the fact that you have the expansion mm -hmm. and the expansion built upon what was already there and it and it addressed some of the issues that the players had mm -hmm. not I actually did not have an issue with it I actually thought that the combat system was fine it was really random I'll give you that it sure. was very random um, luck based but. If you're trying to go in with only a fraction of an army and hoping to win, then you're making that conscious, conscious decision to not roll as many dice as you could, mm -hmm. right? So that, again, is on you. However, they addressed the fact that now you've got cards you can play that can match symbols, and now you, and, and they just... 
they took what was good and made it better. Okay. And so it took it from what might have been a 7.8 to a 9.10. Um, it was already a 9 for me. The expansion took it to a 10. It's been my number one since I played it in 2016. Uh, in the two-player game, I showed this off. This is something that will never leave my collection. When I used to play with a, a game group of mine, we used to write in the lid, and we used to track who would win and lose. Uh, we stopped doing that after a little while, uh, mainly because this was when I was in the military, active yep. duty, and we, we moved. And so we didn't get a chance to do that anymore. But this game, to me, never gets old. Uh, 30 or more plays, and I still find new ways to do things. So cool. it's awesome. Cool. I respect it. So we've uh, got a screaming child in the background that probably needs a hug from dad. Yeah, he needs a little dad time, yeah, I think. Yeah, because uh, mom's been watching him while we've recorded this video, which, <laughs> by the way, Lizzie, thank you so much. Uh, swing over and watch her top ten, also the couple's top two player. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to be doing a whole collection of other videos. So make sure you go join the Board Game Spotlight community. Yeah, please and do. And hit the subscribe button here on Quack Room. Whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time.